Hi and welcome to this uh, module that introduces uh, reinforcement learning. Uh, so far we have been looking at uh, popular models of machine learning such as supervised and unsupervised uh, learning. So, supervised learning we looked at the classification and the regression problem and in unsupervised learning we looked at clustering and frequent pattern uh, and so on and so forth. And I have a question for you. So, so how did you learn to cycle? Was it supervised learning or was it unsupervised learning? Right? There is really no one telling you how you should cycle, right? I mean, how much, uh, how many pounds of pressure you should put with your left foot and what angle you should be leaning and so on and so forth, right? If you think of it as a supervised learning problem, uh, that is uh, how it should be. And it was not completely unsupervised because it is not like you just watch people cycling and then figured out what the pattern that you should move in order to cycle and then you just ma magically got on a cycle and started cycling, right? So, what was the crucial thing here, right? There was a trial and error component, right? So, you had to get on the cycle, right? So, you had to try things out yourself uh, before you could learn how to cycle in an acceptable manner, right? So, you had some kind of feedback, it was not completely unsupervised, right? There will be somebody standing there and uh, if, you are, if you learn to cycle as a kid, there was somebody standing there and clapping and saying, hey, great, great, good job, come on, go on, go on or something like that. And of course, falling down hurts, so you know that, right? So, there is some amount of trial and error component and that is a feedback that you are getting from the environment. So, this kind of uh, learning where you are learning to control a system. Uh, through the trial and error and uh, minimal feedback uh, is essentially what reinforcement learning is, right? So, a mathematical formalization uh, that captures this kind of learning uh, is what, uh, what we refer to as reinforcement learning, right? So, in the RL framework, uh, you typically think of, of a learning agent, right? Uh, so, we already looked at uh, learning agents like it could be the supervised learner or it could be an unsupervised agent. In this case, we have a reinforcement learning agent uh, that learns from close interaction uh, with an environment uh, that is outside the uh, control of the agent, right? Uh, uh, the 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 RL agent learns from close interaction with an environment. So, what do I mean by uh, close interaction here? Uh, is that uh, the agent uh, senses the state uh, in which the environment is, right? And it takes an action. Uh, which it then applies to the environment, which causes the state of the environment to change. So, thereby completing the interaction cycle. So, the agent senses what is the state of the environment. So, if it is a cycle, it is going to sense what angle is the cycle tilting in, right? what speed I am moving forward, right? and uh, what speed am I falling and so on and so forth. They all these constitute the state of the uh, system, state of the environment. And the agent is going to take an appropriate action, which would be okay, lean to the right or push down with your right leg, right? And then this action is then applied to the environment and that in turn changes the state of the environment, right? So, the agent learns from uh, such close interaction with the environment and we typically assume that uh, the environment is stochastic. So, every time you take an action, you are not going to get the same response from the environment. So, things could be slightly different, right? So, there might be a small uh, stone in the, uh, in the road that you did not have the last time you went over this place and therefore, uh, what was a smooth ride uh, could suddenly turn bumpy and uh, so on and so forth, right? I mean, so, you know that cycling always has some amount of noise and then you have to react to the noise. So, apart from uh, this interaction, uh, the mathematical abstraction also assumes that there is some kind of an evaluation signal that is available from the environment uh, that um, gives you some measure of how well you are performing uh, in this uh, particular uh, task, right? If you remember, we needed to have an evaluation measure for every task and we are assuming that this comes in uh, the form of some kind of a scalar evaluation from the environment. It could be somebody clapping and saying that, hey, you are doing well or it could be falling down and getting hurt. So, all of this would be translated to some kind of a numeric scale, right? And that is the mathematical abstraction that we make, right? So, the goal of the agent is to learn a policy uh, which is a kind of a mapping from the states uh, that uh, you sense to the actions that you apply, so as to maximize a measure of long term performance. Right. So, I am not just interested in staying upright for the next 2 seconds, but I am really interested in getting from point A to point B. So, I have to make sure that I stay balanced throughout the uh, entire uh, duration of the ride. So, this is the basic idea behind uh, uh, the reinforcement learning problem. So, each uh, reinforcement learning algorithm, the goal is to learn a policy 
that maximizes some measure of long term performance. Right? So, there have been many many successful applications of uh, reinforcement learning. Uh, so one of some of the marquee applications come from the domain of uh, game playing like with uh, many classical AI approaches. Uh, so, backgammon uh, is a board uh, game uh, based on die rolls. Uh, if people have not familiar with backgammon, it is similar to uh, the game Ludo. Uh, but uh, it's also got a rich history. Uh, people have been playing it for uh, several centuries, and there are even world championships in backgammon. And the world's best player of backgammon is actually a reinforcement learning engine. So notice that I didn't qualify it saying the world's best computer player or anything. Uh, so it uh, was the, the world's best player, uh, and I managed to beat the world champion in backgammon over a uh, tournament. Right, and uh, so more recent vintage. Uh, so, people have also gotten uh, <coughs> a reinforcement learning agent uh, to play at uh, video games, Atari video games from scratch. So, the input to the system were uh, like pixels from the screens right, and the output from the system were uh, joystick controls and they managed to play these uh, uh, games from scratch. Right. And um, so, in autonomous agents like in robots and uh, other autonomous agents, uh, reinforcement learning is almost always the uh, learning algorithm of choice. And um, so, in adaptive control, and uh, one of the uh, uh, again uh, very prominent success stories of reinforcement learning uh, is uh, this helicopter pilot uh, that was initially uh, trained by Andrew Ng uh, at, um, at Berkeley and later at Stanford, uh, where uh, you trained a reinforcement learning algorithm uh, to fly a, a helicopter and uh, at uh, near human level uh, competence. Right. And there are other applications where people have looked at applying it in uh, combinatorial optimization problems, solving really hard optimization problems and also in uh, personalization and in uh, adaptive systems like intelligent tutoring systems. Right. And uh, so to wrap up this set of uh, introductory modules, uh, I just wanted to recap the different machine learning paradigms that we will be covering in the course. Uh, so the first one we will be looking at is supervised learning. Uh, where we will be looking at learning and in, uh, input output map and uh, so the, uh, class, uh, the, the tasks that we look at here are classification where the outputs that we are looking to predict are categorical outputs uh, like yes or no or blue or red or by, by a computer or not, not by a computer. And the second uh, supervised learning problem we look at is regression where the output is a continuous output. And the second class of problems we look at are unsupervised learning problems. Uh, where we are interested in discovering patterns in the data, not necessarily in predicting a specific output. And uh, the, uh, the canonical task we look at here are clustering, where we are interested in finding cohesive groups in the data and also association uh, rules, uh, where we are interested in finding frequently occurring uh, patterns. Right? And the third uh, uh, paradigm which we will spend very little time on uh, is uh, reinforcement learning, uh, where you are interested in uh, learning uh, control. Uh, or learning to control a system uh, based on uh, minimal feedback. Right. So, from the next uh, module onwards, we will start looking at taking a little bit more uh, mathematically uh, rigorous uh, look at uh, the machine learning.